As a content creator or a content entrepreneur, you know the importance of using your content to reach others and to increase your business. One of the people who's really known for that, matter of fact, the phrase content entrepreneur is Joe Polizzi. Joe Polizzi is a person that's worked with content. I've followed him for many years and it was a real treat that we got a chance to interview him for a recent challenge we did, our Build Business Challenge, and he gives some real gems on how you can use Web3 content and what you need to know today. This is one you want to take some notes on. So get your note-taking device of choice ready to go as we talk to Joe Polizzi here on this episode of Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. Welcome to Stark Raving Entrepreneurs, where you discover how to achieve your goals and dreams, getting the freedom you want, all while living voluntarily, peacefully, and with a live and let live lifestyle. And hello, hello, hello. Welcome again to a wonderful time where we're going to be sharing about content and how you can use that in the Web3 environment. We're going to be talking about uh, building your business and looking here what you can do in the midst of crazy world 2022. Now, in these sessions, you're going to get a chance to discover how you not only survive, but also thrive using some powerful tools and techniques that are called Web3. To help you understand and then determine what's best for you and your entrepreneurial ventures, we've got some amazing people coming, and today you are going to really be blown away. Hi, I'm your host, Terry Brock, and I'm joined by my uh, co-host, Gina Carr. Gina, how are you doing today? Well, I am excited about learning more about Web3 from one of my mentors, one of my um, folks that I really respect in this space, and it's just such an exciting topic. I'm very eager to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to be talking with Joe Polizzi. He is one of my heroes, has helped me for many years following his content, and he's well known for the work in content marketing and the content marketing industry. He's been advising businesses and individuals to generate dazzling, helpful problem-solving content, and then use that for marketing. It's worked beautifully for arguably millions of people. And he sold his company, the Content Marketing Institute, for over $17 million a few years ago and kind of retired and got out of it. But then when he heard about what's happening with Web3 and NFTs and these kind of things, oh my goodness, he said, I got to come back. So today we've asked Joe to share with us his perspective on content marketers, on content entrepreneurs. I love that term. And we're going to be using NFTs, talking about what he's doing with it in a unique way where Gina and I are definitely involved, both of us on that. And remember all the way through, this is what we like to say every day, this is not financial advice. We're making no investment or financial advice decisions for you here whatsoever. And we're saying that we are making educational advice to get out there and start learning. So you'll need to consult with a qualified financial advisor for any investment decisions that you make. So Gina, you and I went to an event held by Joe and his team in Phoenix, Arizona, May earlier this year. And we went there without paying a registration fee because we purchased Joe's version of an NFT, which he calls an NET, the never ending ticket. And so Gina, what did you think of that? And what was the experience like for you? Well, it's just such a different experience. Uh, I mean, the Joe essentially presented through his website, you can buy one ticket for, let's just say 800 bananas, or you can buy two tickets for 1600 bananas, or you can buy a never ending ticket and come back to this event time and time again. And if you don't want to come back anymore, you can sell this ticket. Uh, it's just such an amazing thing. And that was, let's just say 2,500 bananas or so. So it was a little bit more, but not crazy more. And given that he has a reputation for putting on quality events year after year after year, even though this was the very first one, I thought it made sense to take a risk and make the investment. And it's amazing the mindset that goes into investing in an event or an organization versus just buying a ticket or buying a, a, a slot for a year. Very different mindset that I experienced. So excited to hear more about how he thought about that and decided to offer that this year. Absolutely. Well, Joe Polizzi, join us. We love, glad to have you here. Welcome aboard. Terry and Gina, it's wonderful to be here. You two are way too kind. So thank you for having me. And I'm excited to talk about whatever you two want to talk about, specifically in Web3. 
Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Web3 to start with, and like as we like to do on each of these, to have our special guests to say, okay, here's what Web3 is, particularly as it relates to their area. So for you, that would be content marketing, content entrepreneurs. How do you see Web3 playing a role for entrepreneurs? Well, it's, I mean, Terry, you mentioned this. I was retired. I was writing, you know, I wrote a novel called The Will to Die in 2019, and we had the kickoff party and Actually, it was May 8th of 2020. So it was right before the world shut down, if you will. Oh, yeah. And and I was I was literally just planning on continuing to write novels. And I still plan on doing that. But as uh, as things were going on with COVID and I was starting to do some research, I I got interested in Web3. Jeremiah Aoyang and Chris Dixon and a couple of people that I follow, you know, started tweeting more about, you know, what Web3 was and this idea of tokenization. And I'm like, what is this? And specifically, my passion has always been content marketing or, you know, how businesses can create valuable, relevant, compelling information on an ongoing basis to create some kind of a behavior change with their audience. And then if you take that from a marketing side and you look at, okay, well, content creators, I saw a a bunch of content creators that were launching businesses and they were doing so on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and these other social platforms. And weren't creating a lot of value through those social networks because most, as we know, most of the value of content creation on platforms we don't control goes to YouTube. They go to, it goes to, to Google, to Instagram, Meta, whatever the case is. And I started to research on tokenization and I said, okay, well, there could be an opportunity where content creators can develop something on the blockchain and give a little bit of that ownership back to their community or, what can you do? Or, or I even thought of, do you have to have tens of thousands of followers to actually be a successful content entrepreneur? Could you do it with a hundred as Lee Jin talks about a hundred super fans. Kevin Kelly talked about, you know, 1000 true fans. I'm trying to figure out, could, could you really have a small audience and started to do research and you saw some of the RNF NFTs happen. You started to see some creators get involved in social tokens, which we'll talk about in a little bit more in more detail in a second. But I love the idea of um, owning property and not rented property. So this would be something like creating my own email newsletter or podcast or my own membership site, my own website, things that the content creator can control outside of the fact that we can't control a social media's algorithm and they can turn or shut us off the network at any time. And so I'm like, okay, well, Web3, decentralization, this might be a thing for content creators. And of course, then I went down the rabbit hole with the whole thing, trying to figure it out. And by the way, just so everyone knows, as we go through this, I'm still in experimentation mode. I think the whole industry is still in experimentation mode. It's very, very early days. And I'm happy to share with what I thought worked and what didn't work, but we launched our social token in March of 2021, TiltCoin. And as you talked about, we launched our NET program, our NFT program with the Creator Economy Expo in December of 21. And we've made, you know, learned a lot through those programs, but I still do, all in all, I still believe that there's a lot of potential in this area. And if you're a serious content creator, or what Terry, you like, you and I like to call content entrepreneur, that we should take a thoughtful look at the possibilities with Web3 and what that really means, especially from a utility standpoint, when I guess right now we're in a little bit of what people call crypto winter. Winter, You've got a lot of uh, tokens that have been discounted a lot, but that's we're not really talking about price here. We're talking about what those tokens can do. And I think we need to focus on that direction. Mm, I, I love that. I love that uh, perspective because yes, Terry and I have been around this space, cryptocurrency since 2014, and we've seen ups and downs and ups and downs yep. and highs and lows. And we understand and believe that the foundations are there. This really is gonna transform the way people do business. Um, forever, uh, the, the blockchain that is as the foundation. And of course, blockchain is the foundation for the things that we're talking about with the tokenization. From a high level perspective, can you explain to our audience what you, how you define creator coin, social token, and NFT? Sure, ha- happy to. Uh, so creator coins and social tokens are essentially the same thing, depending on how you're coming at it. So so you might look at one company and they'll say social token and somebody else will say creator coin. We started calling it creator coin because we started on the rally.io network, which is a collection of creator coins. 
And then they did a 180 and started calling it a social token. I'm like, okay, well, this is interesting. Is what is it? Is it doesn't matter? It's a it's a personalized branded token, if you will. It is on the blockchain and it is a FT, a fungible token, unlike an NFT. So we'll get to an NFT in a second. But a fungible token is like Gina, you have a dollar and I have a dollar, and we switch dollars. And there's no difference. Your dollar is worth the same as my dollar. There's no real difference, even though there's a serial number on each one of these. It does the same thing, essentially. Social tokens work exactly the same way. So if somebody from my community has 10 tilt coin and somebody else has 10 tilt coin, they're not unique in any way. There's no underlying smart contract. It's just a token. And whatever that community, in our, this case, the Tilt community, gets for those tokens, then they can use them. So you could use those on merchandise. You could use those to go to Creator Economy Expo. You could use those for to put against training. So we're trying to use it as our own little currency. But the most important thing, if you want to figure out if a social token works for you, you have to create ways for your community to use that token. So the more ways that you create for them to use that token, and a lot of people start with merchandise, we did as well. It's it's a low hanging fruit. Oh, great. You can buy this tilt coin mug or this shirt, and you can use the whatever tilt coin you have in your account for that. Now, I don't know how much detail you want me to go in, Junior, but there's a lot of different ways that somebody could launch a social token. We can get into more detail, but we launched on the rally.io network, which is a collection of about 500 social tokens right now, and they have an approval process. So if you don't have a larger audience, you probably aren't approved. There's a newer one out called Minted. There's another one out called CoinVice. These are just groups that they cover a lot of the initial cost for the creator because they want to get more people using this. So they'll, they'll onboard you into the system. Then you have another company called Roll, where they will actually they're not within a sub network. You're actually creating your own token, like a whale coin. And they help you uh, get the whole thing. They have developers get, that get the whole thing launched for you on a blockchain like Ethereum or Solana or something like that. Need a little bit more technical people to do that in your team. And then you could just launch it yourself. And we could talk about the technical aspects. I don't want to get launched uh, to, to, to drown in that because it can get quite technical. We went with Rally because we wanted an upfront system that was easy for people who knew nothing about crypto to get into. And that's what Rally is amazing for. It, Tiltcoin is a sub-token of Rally. It's on the Ethereum blockchain. And so it is not completely decentralized. We chose not to go that direction where if you, you could just say, oh, I'm going to launch Tiltcoin on Solana or on Ethereum and do it myself on my developers. And that's fine, but you've got to create the interface to make that happen. You've got to get listed on different exchanges. It is a real pain. We decided to go with a very simple solution. So, so that is a social token or a creator coin. So a creator a content entrepreneur can say, oh, I'm going to launch this within, within my community and try to develop my own economy and have this coin token be use, useful for a lot of different things. Great. Then you have what I would call more project-based based initiatives. And a lot of that's happening in the NFT world or uh, non-fungible token, if you will. And the difference is within Gina, you know, you, we just traded our dollars. It's the same note. Every NFT theoretically is supposed to be different. There's an underlying smart contract. If you have an NFT project that's on the Ethereum blockchain, every one of these has a little smart contract with a lot of data in it, telling you what that specific NFT does, that token does. So a lot of people uh, learned about this in the art world. So every token, like if you go to OpenSea, which is sort of the eBay for NFTs, if you will, and you'll say, oh, well, that NFT is different because it's got a different picture. Well, that's how a lot of them are. So it's happened big in art or in music. It's like, oh, I, I own the NFT to this piece of music. And I know that's different because the music's different. So we know that underlying. And then in the contract itself, it might say things like, oh, if you own this NFT, you get the rights to use the image on anything you want. Or you it might say you don't get the rights to use the image here. Or you might get the rights to use the music. I know, I think uh, Brian Fanzo, friend of the show, obviously, NFT uh, 365 podcast, he bought an, an, a music NFT and he, used, and he was able to use the rights for that and he can use that music on a show, royalty-free, because he bought the rights to it. 
So that's an NFT. And then, so you're like, okay, well, what can you do with that? Now what's really interesting today is you're getting into a lot of utility NFTs. So you have uh, like Gary Vaynerchuk's V Friends program. If you bought a V Friends NFT, which has a nice little piece of art associated with it, it gave you access to a three-year event that he runs called VCon. So it's like, oh, okay, I buy a ticket, I get the artwork, and I also get access to going to the show. Um, Kevin Rose just launched Moonbirds, a program from his Proof Collective uh, Association. So if you owned a Moonbird and you did something called nesting it, which basically says it's a promise that you won't sell it, on OpenSea or any other platform, then what it does is it gave you access to cool new projects. So you got a free NFT drop of another project uh, if you had if you owned a moon moonbird and you were holding it, nesting it. So he's come out with a, a lot of different projects through that as well. And so that's an interesting project. And so that's you know sort of how we got the idea for we're going to do an event. It's going to be in May. It's going to be called Creator Economy Expo. What better way to start testing and experimenting this and saying, okay, well, let's launch our own NFT where, and we, the Genesis, Genesis project. So first project, we were going to launch a hundred of these. We called them never ending tickets. And the idea was, is that, yeah, you could go and invest $900 or a thousand dollars to go to the conference. And if you get whatever you get out of that conference, you get out of that conference and hopefully it was worth the 900 or a thousand bucks you paid for it and done. Or you could do like what you and Terry did and say, well, I think I'm going to want to go to this conference over and over and over again. You believe that in me as the producer that we're going to keep doing that and not do a rug, as people call it a rug pull and say, oh, we're not going to do any more events. Sorry, you're out of luck. You said, no, I believe in what Joe's doing. I believe in the creator, what they're doing. And we launched this a never ending ticket. So you get an original piece of artwork with that. Some of that artwork comes with um, things like, like one of the ones that was just minted recently gets to do a, a content project with me specifically. So that was one that's, that's written into uh, what we said, or what our promise was. So that was, that was a very unique NFT and everyone, some people get access to swag and, but everyone gets VIP access. So basically it's a, hey, instead of just investing in this one-time event, you get it as long as we run the event. And when it's held, you get VIP access. So that might mean unlimited drinks. It might mean a, an, a, a workshop that's only available to NET holders. So access and utility are sort of the NFT uh, examples that are coming down the pike here. And so that's when you think about it. Okay, social tokens. I'm going to create a little mini community and try to monetize that best I can. And then NFT, I think, is more around projects, events, music, art. Um, or if you want to really find your super fans and get them to help sponsor a program, say, hey, buy this. And then as we go, you'll get surprised with new opportunities. And Gary Vaynerchuk's really good at doing this, where he'll just out of the blue, say, hey, we're just dropping something new. All you owners of this type of NFT you'll see a new NFT in your wallet and here it is. And so you're building this super fandom, if you will. So those, that's kind of the difference where NFT has a smart contract. They're all supposed to be different. FT or social tokens all supposed to be the same and interchangeable. Brilliant uh, explanation. Really appreciate that. Do you have an, uh, a feeling or a suggestion to, you, you know uh, our crowd pretty well, sure. I believe. We're content entrepreneurs, we're speakers, authors, coaches, consultants. Which would you do first and why would you do an in, in F T first or would you do a creator? So I th to answer your question, Gina, it's <laughs> launching a social token is a real commitment. If you're going to launch a social token or a creator coin, it's also much more difficult from a technology standpoint to launch one. You really do, I think if you don't have the developers on staff, you really need to be under a minted or a rally or a coin buys or work with a role or some of these other companies to help you along and then help train. Then you have to train your fans, your audience on how to do these things. 
So I don't, I don't know if we would have been as successful with Tilcoin if we didn't make it so easy for people to say, just sign up on Rally with your email, send me your Rally ID or username, and I can go ahead and, and send you um, Tiltcoin. Now, I'm going to tell you flat out that for us at the Tilt and for what I've done personally, I'm absolutely signing with a creator coin. I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to tell you, you probably don't want one. <laughs> so because we have had one now for a year and a half. So as we've been around, we've been doing this for a long time. We've got almost 2,200 coin holders. It's a pretty significant community. Half of those people are, at, are on our Discord where you can activate status. So if you have a certain number of tilt coin, you go to our Discord group, which is our community group discussion forum and you can activate into let's say if you have five tilt coin you get into tilt five access and you'll once a month we'll deliver a, a unique piece of content to that group that nobody else will get that kind of thing we it, if you're going to do it you have to integrate it into everything you do so if somebody signs up for the tilt newsletter they get tilt free five dollars in free tilt coin just for doing that and but we you know they have to go through a little bit of process to get them signed up for rally so great then that the end of that week we deliver their tilt coin and you get a referral um a referral code uh, address if you will so if somebody wanted to say hey so go ahead and sign this up i love joe polizzi's the tilt newsletter every time somebody signs up for that they get another five dollars we've had some of our super fans make you know get over a thousand dollars in tilt coin just from their referral process and they'll send three or four or five out a week and it just happens and there there are super fans and that's what it's for so i love the idea of social fans because if you have a group of super fans and you've got a wonderful community there might not be a system of loyal better loyalty than what i've ever seen happen with social tokens we've got a group of i would say the top 50 that own the most tilt coin if you will and they are our super fans they absolutely i reach out to them on a, on all the time you you terry you and gina uh met a lot of those people at creator economy expo they already bought in to the whole process they're along for the ride and they're of course interested in web3 because they're trying to figure it out too so you see a lot of that say like, oh i what's joe doing i want to figure it out and we've become very close with each other but we've all, I mean, it's such a new technology that we've struggled to say, okay, well, how do we make sure that if people want to buy merchandise, they can use Tiltcoin? Well, we had to have a developer figure out that whole process. I think we were the first one on the rally network to figure that out because it, there's nothing, there's no technology. It's not like, Hey, I, I want to I want to do an email newsletter. Are there email newsletter providers out there? Yeah. There's a thousand of them. Well, today for around social tokens, depending on the network you're on, it's very, very challenging. And there's one creator specifically, his name's Gary Henderson. He had a very popular coin on the Rally Network. And then he moved off of, um, of Rally specifically. And he wanted to go on to Solana Network with Rally's help, but go on to Solana Network and create his own interface, his own community. And he has four full-time developers that are doing this with him. So this is an investment. He's very successful at it, but you have to commit to it long-term. So again, I'm... I'm a bull when it comes to social tokens. We're so early. It's like 1995 internet years, if you will, if you want to put it in that. And, and especially right now, it's very exciting if you're into tokenization because everybody's bearish about it right now, which is the perfect time to start a project like this. Now, if you're saying, I don't know if I should go, Gina's question, you're, you're like, oh, should I go social token or NFT? If you're going to practice and you're going to test before you want the commitment of a social token. Because you launch a social token, you cannot practice, in my opinion. You are in it. You have to build an audience first, and then you can integrate your social token wherever you have touch points, which is wonderful. But I would probably do an NFT project. I've seen some very successful Genesis programs, which are basically experimental beginner programs. Somebody will say, hey, I launched my Genesis NFT project. When they say that, that's their first 100 or 300, and they're testing it out and see how it goes, see if they can get their community involved in it. And you can launch that. Very, there's a lot of developers that are out there. There's a lot of, and I'm not as familiar with the NFT te technology, but I know there are a lot more uh, NFT offerings out there right now. Even on OpenSea, you can launch your own NFT, if you will, and they'll help you do that. But I would probably say work with a developer if you can. There's many of them out there, and you can launch your 100, 200, 300 
NFT program, you need an individual piece of art, most likely for all of them. You could, you could launch the same one, but you have to figure out, okay, what does this get them specifically? Is it for like, if you are a book author, maybe it's for, um, you know, cha unwritten chapters of your book or everyone that, that, uh, buys your NFT program for launching your book, they get to come to your, uh, book tour somewhere in the United States or your digital book tour or whatever. Think about access. What can you give them? What utility can you give them? What rights can you give them? Maybe if for special NFTs for your book, they you'll name the in your next book, you'll name the character a character after them or something. I know David Baldacci does that all the time, but he doesn't do it with NFTs. You could absolutely do that with NFTs. So you always think about, you could do it around a project and you could give specific things away that you already have an inventory that you're not monetizing already. So I would absolutely, Gina, go and test an NFT out. And again, what, what's the point of doing this? The point of doing this is you have a little bit of your intellectual property that you can siphon off and say, for this project, I'm going to gift that out to my super fans whatever that might be. And you have a lot, you have a lot of intellectual property as a writer, as a speaker, as your audience, as a consultant, you have a lot of things that you do. You have a no lot of knowledge that you could give out and say, Hey, what can we do to our super with our super fans that they would want to invest in something here and be a part of this, whatever this special group is. So then you can really think, Oh, okay, we can get parties together. We can do an event together. We can do special projects. If you're in the group, you can do special projects. So you see that happening where you get access to things you wouldn't have before and you create these small little exclusive communities, which good or bad are working really well for a lot of these uh, NFT creators. So I would say everyone listening, if you're going to test it out, go NFT. But if you're in it and you believe it, you're in it for the long haul, I would absolutely vote social token. And I, I, Terry and Gina, I would tell you, I'm probably in the minority on that. I would say most people are bullish NFTs and most just don't know about social tokens because I've only talked, I've maybe talked with 20 other social, I mean, social token creators out there. I don't, there's not millions of them like, like there are with NFT projects. There's only a few that are doing it really well. Even on the rally network, let's say there's 500 social token creators on the rally network. There's probably only 50 or 60 that have really figured out that you have to integrate this into everything that you're doing. So it is, it is definitely a commitment. And a lot of these big influencers will launch a social token project. They were launched by like Jarvis Landry, one of my favorite football players, receiver launches his ju juice coin. Everybody go get juice coin, juice coin. You know what? Never heard of anything after day one. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's more the rule not the exception. Unfortunately, they don't treat it as a commitment and you have to. Yeah, it's a commitment and you've got a community there. You've talked about that. Building that community is really what it's all about. One of the things you've said that uh, we really appreciate is before you say, hey, I'm going to just get out and launch an NFT or a social coin, get a good community. You know, you need that community built, which is what you've been doing. But I wanted to ask you a question on that. Often we hear people in the uh, space of Web3 and NFTs talk about using Discord. And for many of us, we go Discord. We tried it once. It didn't quite work. We're trying, we know we need to get in there. Uh, how many uh, people do you see using Facebook groups? And then how would you encourage us to get more into the Discord groups? So great point, Terry. The first thing that you have to talk about is building a community has nothing yeah. to do with the platform. And you know, we've talked about this before, you know that, but it's good to reiterate that it doesn't have to be like a paid membership site like you'd have with uh, Mighty Networks or Circle or something like that, where you create your mm -hmm. own community or you use somebody else's rented land to build your own community, which would be like a Discord or a Telegram or a Facebook group or something mm -hmm. like, or Twitter, Twitter chat, whatever it is. Your community can be anywhere. We decided to go with Discord, which is honestly like an old school discussion forum. Yeah, it's, it's, It got big in the gamer area. So I found out from my kids, I've got two kids, 19 and 20, and they're big into video games online and they're in a bunch of Discord groups. So that's where I learned about it. And I'm like, okay, well, then you started to see the Web3 community grow with it. And then when we launched the rally, our rally token, Tilcoin, we saw that a lot of uh, creators were using Discord. I'm like, okay, well, maybe this is a thing. There were some integrations there. How has it worked so far? So we've got, I'm looking at it right now over here on the screen. 
I got 1,360 people. We probably, I think we have maybe 30% of those people that have gone to our Discord page every week. Is that good? I don't know. It's, it's another touch point. Because also of those 1360, there's really 100 core super fans, but that's all I really care about. I really am focused on the super fans, the ones that are giving into the community that are part of this thing. But by the way, the super fans that are on Discord are also the ones that have the most tilt coin. And half of those people have a never ending ticket for CEX. So it's just they're they're buying into everything that we're doing and they're part of it. I like the it's it's a it's really easy to use from a Discord standpoint, but but it does take a while to get used to. So it doesn't. If somebody was saying, hey, should I get into this Discord? The answer is probably not. <laughs> it's probably, no, it, it depends. Like, where's your community at? What's going to be the best for you? Maybe it is a Facebook group. Nothing wrong with that. It's all rented land to me. I mean, Discord could go down tomorrow. They could change the rules tomorrow, just like Meta could change the rules, just like Twitter. They're all um, private companies that could do whatever they want. So they can kick us off. They could change the rules. They could cut all our integrations that we built. They're done. So whatever works for you is fine. I mean, you could even use reply back with email, which is old school community building, right? Hey, reply to this email. Let me know what's going on. But I do like some kind of platform. We just decided to go with Discord. I know some other ones, which is more like a messenger type services. Telegram, a lot of people are using that where you're just having a full-blown discussion. On the business side, you see a lot of this happening in Slack. Some, sometimes it's happening in LinkedIn groups. You know, where are you at? Where are you at and where your customers are at? So if your customers are on LinkedIn, I probably would be looking at LinkedIn first. If they're on Twitter, let's look at Twitter, maybe Twitter spaces. A regular Twitter spaces community is maybe what you should be looking at uh, instead of get moving others to Discord. Discord was really hard for us because none of our audience was on Discord. And we had to tell everyone, oh, we had to educate everyone to move over to Discord to do this thing. Was it worth it? Terry and Gina, I'm not sure. We did all the hard work to, to move it, but now they're here and we're invested in it and it's working fine. So we're going to keep going with it. But if I had to start over again, I don't know if I would make the same decision because it was six months of really hard work because it's hard enough to educate people to just be part and passionate about your community and what you're trying to do, let alone saying you got it. So we're, we're trying to teach them Web3, social tokens, NFTs, and Discord all at the same time. That's silly. Like nobody should be doing that. It's hard enough just to be a content entrepreneur, but let's just throw out all these technologies. So keep it as simple as you can. Mm, that's what I'm thinking. And I'm wondering if those integrations are available for Facebook groups yet. Surely someone has developed a, an app or some sort of extension that would, would make that work. Do you know of any such thing? I, I think that anything is possible if you have a good developer. Um, so we talked about Gary Henderson's example before he has a, he has a big audience on clubhouse. And so he meets, uh, he uses discord and clubhouse and he's got an integration set up with, that if you do something in clubhouse or you comment on something, or you show up, you automatically get Gary coin. So all these things are happening automatically and his developers have done that. So I would imagine if you've got a good Facebook developer. And so basically you ask the question, Hey, Okay, what do we want to do? We want to, so let's say, Gina, you launched Gina Coin. And Gina Coin, every time that somebody goes into your Facebook group, you want to deliver them one Gina Coin automatically. Well, you've got to make sure you get it set up somehow. And so the, everything talks to each other and get a Facebook developer to do that. And I have a feeling it's probably possible, probably not easy, but it's probably possible or somebody's tried to do it. I mean, that's the whole point of having a social token is you can be anywhere and you can compensate your fans in different ways. If they're following you on Twitter, they comment on Twitter. We're, we're trying to do that with our podcast now because we're asking for, hey, if you like our podcast and you'd give us a review, we will give you tilt coin for every review. Well, it's, it's hard getting reviews for podcasts and this is the best we've ever done with reviews because for some reason, and that's why I'm talking about People get excited about it because it's sort of unknown. They're not quite sure. And that's from a loyalty and an excitement and an engagement standpoint. I've never launched anything like a social token because people get hyped up about it. Like they're interested. Like, well, how does this work? And you're going to give me $20 in tilt coin. And what the heck is that? And is this real money? Is it fake money? Is it all the questions, right? And the answer is, I don't know, right? We, we're all trying to figure this out together. 
it is it is the value that you create as a creator, as a content entrepreneur. So whatever it's useful for, that's what it's useful for. But yeah, it's it's interesting. I think anything could be done on any network. I would just say you got to be careful because you could set up all that development for Gina Coin, and that as soon as you do, Facebook will change their algorithm again or change the rules, and then you're done. And we've seen some of that happen. We've created a couple of things in Discord that we can't do anymore. So this is a regular mm-hmm. thing that will happen. And that's why it's an ongoing investment. Yeah, it is a quiet an investment. It's like we get used to a particular platform and then now somebody comes along with a new whoop de doo group. And I don't know whoop de doo group or what do they do, but it's yeah. a whole new thing with their new terms and ways of doing it. It can be frustrating, but I think there's a lot of uh, good there. And matter of fact, uh, those of you that uh, haven't tapped into his podcast, be sure and do that. Matter of fact, we've got two of them. Uh, one I listen to regularly is Content Inc. INC. It's about five minutes, comes out every Monday. And I love it because I can get the information I need. And you can get that at the place where you uh, regularly get your podcast. And also this old marketing is one that he does a little bit longer, really going in depth with Robert Rose. So we get to hear Joe and Robert talking about marketing issues that are really good every time. And matter of fact, I'm going to uh, release something here too. what Joe has been saying, you can get $20 For each of those platforms, that would be where I went to school out in the country, about $40 that you could get if you listen to that and you'll hear the instructions at the end. All you got to do is, well, a little bit of stuff and you do that and then you'll do it. So bounce over to that and you can not only get great content from Content Inc. and This Old Marketing, those two separate podcasts, but also listen to their instructions that they're giving and you will find out on the most recent episodes, listen there and you'll be able to get $20 from each one. So you will be able to make $40 just coming here to this today. Joe, we appreciate you doing that. How is that working out for you, by the way? It's well, you know, you you brought up the key point here is that if you want your tokens to work for you, you have to get them into the hands of your audience, no matter how you can. So that's where the integration really helps. We probably, the reason the biggest reason for our success with TiltCoin is the integration with our email newsletter. And Terry, you mentioned this before, you have to first build an audience and hopefully a community. So how do you do like, what's the, so everyone listen to this. If you're a content creator, freelancer, consultant, whatever, what's your home base for us, it's an e-newsletter for you. It could be a podcast for somebody else. It could be uh, a YouTube video series, right? Could be on clubhouse, could be a Twitch stream, whatever it is. So Once you do that, then you come up with some system that you'll test to get tokens into the hands of. So maybe every time somebody has uh, gives you a review, uh, maybe it's somebody that you refers to friend. All those things can be set up for tokens. Hey, you show up to our Facebook group, you get a token. So it's all reward system. And once you get tokens into their hands, that's when things change. So I can like what we're trying to find out right now, Terry, is. What are they? If somebody has tilt coin, how much more likely are they to go to our in person event, Creator Economy Expo? Like, that's mm-hmm. what I want to know. So, back when I was at Content Marketing Institute, like we used to do all the things, right? We used to have newsletter and podcast and Twitter chat and uh, magazine and everything. I'm like, well, how, how do I know who my best customers are? That's what I want to know out of this whole thing. Like, who are my best customers? And what we found out, it took us about two years to find this data, is it didn't matter what they were signed up for as long as it was three things. So, th- so if, they were, if they were subscribed to our magazine, if they listened to our podcast, or, and they listened to our webinar series, that was three. That was the magic number that took them to another level of them going to our big event and also spending as much money as possible, which we called increased yield or creating better customers. So when I found that out, all we wanna do is, so when they come to our blog, all we wanna do is just make sure, okay, well, we wanna get them involved in everything else. They get in the blog, how do we get them to listen to the podcast and read the blog? How do we get them to then read the blog and subscribe to the newsletter? How do we get them to then go to the webinar program? Because we know that's like, I I call it like uh, you have, you're like an octopus with eight arms of content love. Like, how do you wrap your audience in all this content love? And the more that you do, the more apt they are to buy from you, to be your real super fans, to be your greatest customers. So the same thing happens with tokens. So you set up, you have your audience, you have your community, and you think about how can I give these things out for very simple things and simple behavior. 
So, and then what's really interesting is people say, oh, okay, well, I can use it for all these things. And then they end up purchasing more, which we've never really asked anybody to do. But a lot of, a lot of our super fans have done that as well. Say, hey, Joe, I support you and what the Tilt's doing. I want to, to buy some more Tilt coin and be one of your top holders, whatever. So now our goal is to create more levels where they can feel even more special for somebody that has 20 or 40 or a hundred till coin or whatever the case is. And that's kind of what my August is going to be about is figuring that out, but it's giving it away as much as you can. And that's what, that's what you want to figure. How do you get the into their hands? And because you've got that onboarding process. And then once they get through that, they've done a lot of work. They're probably with you. They're probably part of your team. So then you want to treat them as a, as the super fan they are. Uh, Joe, j just on a very real uh, example here, and I think this, this could probably help a lot of folks who are planning their own events. Uh, we do have a retreat coming up at the end of August, and we're planning for a fairly small, small retreat, small intimate retreat. Uh, we have not yet launched our own NFT. But, and part of the reason is we understand from one of the brilliant speakers from your event, Mitch Jackson, that we got to know better. Mm -hmm. um, we, you really need to do have a legal entity for each different NFT that you launch for each different tranche, so to speak, not each NFT, but for the group of NFTs mm -hmm. that you launch. And so does it make sense? You just mentioned giving out tokens. I know Michael Stelsner at, um, his recent social media marketing world gave out a bunch of NFTs at the end. So my, my question that I'm finally getting to is, does it make sense to reward the folks that do sign up for our retreat by giving them an NFT when we might not be ready yet to sell one? Or does it make sense to wait and sell the NFT at another time? Just, just kind of on the surface, you're feeling. Well, the answer is yes, you could do both, I guess is the answer that if I'm going to hedge my bets, but um, I look at those NFTs as a little bit different. If you, if you like what, what Michael Stelzner did at social media marketing world was more of a proof of what they call a Pope proof of attendance. Uh, I guess you could call that an NFT, but basically the, most of the time is, it's just like, Hey, I got this. It's like a collectible. It's like a collectible coin. Hey, I got a collectible coin. Great. Boom. I got that quarter state. I can, cause I visited that state done. Um, that's sort of what. Michael did uh, an NFT is uh, a level way beyond what those are because you're creating real value and taking things that you have from an IP standpoint, whether that's special content drops, whether that's getting together for special meetings, whatever. So what you could do is if you have, let's say you have 25 people that own these special NFTs that you're going to, that they put their money into that they bought, you sold out your Genesis of 25 to 25. Well, when those people attend your meeting, then you could send them a special proof of attendance NFT, which is a lot less expensive to do. It's really easy to do with, I think it's Pope, P-O-A-P dot X-Y-Z. Don't quote me, but I think that's it. And we use those for Creator Economy Expo. And a lot of people did that. Uh, and you could do them for a limited time and, or you could do them around, you could, you could go to an event and you could say, everyone, I'm, I'm here. If you want to meet me, you can get my, proof of attendance that you met me. There's a lot of uh, different things that you could do, but I would probably say if you're going to try an NFT, it's okay to do a small amount, come up with something unique and charge for it. And if I had to do it over again with our, so with, with our NFT program, we launched a hundred and right now, I think we have 44 left or 43 left or something like that. If I had to do it over again, I probably would have kept the same price and, and had and launch 50 instead of a hundred um, and make it that much more exclusive as a gen one, just to get it going. And just to get people to try it. Cause I would, I could say, Hey, we could, we could probably sell between 25 and 50. We have that kind of community. It's a little bit of investment. So we want to make sure we do that. And then I probably would have said, okay, well, if that went well, you can always launch a secondary one. It, just because you launched 25 or 50. I mean, look at, Gary Vaynerchuk, he launches whatever. I don't know what the first one was, 5,000 or 10,000 B-Friends. The B-Friends 2 had 53,000. But Gary has that size of community. Gary can get away with doing those types of things. For what I would call creators in the middle class, where we've got nice audiences of 1,000 to 10,000 to 20,000 people, 
you would launch something small that's specifically for super fans. So I, I would probably just say, hey, it's okay. Iterate it. Think about it, Gina. Go forward and say, we're going to launch these. Um, and, and you could talk to your core community members up front, which maybe I should have done more, although we launched every single thing so quickly. Like if, if you were saying, if you were asking me, Joe, would you do the never ending ticket again? I would say yes, but not first year. I would have done it. I would have sold them at the event. Or I would have sold them once people, because nobody knew it was a first year event. Nobody even knows. What is it? Is this a new event? <laughs> Whatever. What am I doing? Like for if for content marketing world, we could have sold these things hand over fist because it's a different, because it'd been going on for 10 years. It was already out there. I mean, people knew what it was and they saw the value in it. So first you have to sell the value in something and then you sell the NFT program. So mm, yeah, I hear a lot you, of people cause... don't do that. A lot of people just sell the NFT and hope they build the community and the excitement, whatever. That's, that's tough to do. Most of those don't work out very well. Okay. Yes. Cause uh, not only we're educating people on the event, but also on what's an NFT. How do you buy it? All those things. So, oh, so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, let me just uh, say to our audience, if you have a question, please pop it into the chat. Uh, we are going to be wrapping up in just a little bit. I do see some questions that have come in from the chat. Uh, let me start with one from uh, Diane DeResta. A uh, great question. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about, do these tokens have an expiration date? No, that's the, that's the thing about putting anything on the blockchain. It is there and it will be there uh, as far as I can tell forever. And that's what that's, it's going to be, and so if you say the blockchain is a digital ledger that multiple computers have access to, they all look at it, hey, is that right? Is that right? And as soon as a token is created, the token numbers, the digits are always going to be there. So they do not go away. So if you have, if you own an NFT, as long as you have access to the password and the keys associated with that digital wallet, you own that and it's not going away. And even if, and that's the thing. So let's say, so this is what we all believe is true, even this is all early stages, but let's just say that Joe goes away. There's no more the tilt. What happens to tilt coin? They're all still out there. Nothing happens to them. They don't necessarily have the value because you don't have somebody uh, that's, that's pushing an agenda to make those more valuable, but they don't go away. Never ending tickets. So you two have your never ending ticket. If I said, hey, no more creator, no more CEX, we're done. Now, theoretically, they would not be of value, but it, you still have them. You still have them in your wallets. Could somebody else come through and say, anyone who owns, and this is what's amazing about tokens, so anyone who owns this uh, CEX never ending ticket, you can get access to my event, whatever new event it is, <laughs> Content Entrepreneur Expo over here in California, and you can get in for free because you invested in this over here or half price or whatever. So, they exist forever. They're on the blockchain. They are not going away. And that's that's kind of the whole thing behind. Why don't you just do, Joe, why don't you just do a membership? Just do a lifetime membership. Well, I could do a membership and I'm the one that has record of it. I have all the background. And if I go away and say, okay, no more membership, you have nothing at all to show for it. You don't have the artwork. You don't have um, the utility underlying it. So you have a, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit more interesting if you actually have the token that you theoretically will have forever, as long as you have your digital wallet. So we'll yeah, see I how it that, goes. Yeah. I think that underlines the importance of building that community of followers who love you because if they love you, then they're doing it. Or instance, as a classic, uh, Gina and I both have our own individual uh, NETs because we've known Joe. We've seen his work for years and we go, okay, he's got a good team around him. This is the kind of material that we're in. We are content creators. This is perfect for us. And so you've got to think about how you can build that community of yours so that you're able to reach out to people. But now we're looking at the early stages of this. As Joe said, we're at the beginning. It's probably about 1995, maybe even 1990 on uh, where we are. We're just getting rolling and it's going to go far. So now's the time to start building and strengthening that community and thinking in terms of how this would play for you and how it would be there. We're Alta you know, Vista, huh? This is, I think we're yeah. Alta, is that what? <laughs> we're it's like the old CompuServe. We're, we're Prodigy, Prodigy in the beginning of AOL before all the CDs. That's oh, where yeah. we're at. 
I remember getting CompuServe and <laughs> using that. It's, that's long ago. <laughs> it, it's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah, because th think about it. I mean, Bitcoin has been around since 2009. But if you think about NFTs and social tokens, the first NFT project was 2017. Then there were only a couple. And social tokens didn't really get started until 19. And that was very few. So we are in such early days. And that's why really good to get in. I mean, if you're, if you're asking, get involved in other communities, get involved in our community, get involved in whoever's doing this out there to figure out how it works, where you can get best practices, what you can learn from and see if you have an application that works. Yep. I can see uh, the question there from uh, Diane Duress about what if you go out of business, like you were addressing there. In a way, it's kind of like, what if I buy Apple stock and they go out of business? Yep. Well, is it, could Apple go out of business? They could. I don't think they're going to. And that's not financial advice, but it's just uh, my opinion. But uh, if you believe in that company and that status and you see, hey, there's probably some value there, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a unique way and a wonderful way for content entrepreneurs, content creators to be able to help others and form much more of a community and sharing. So it's just yep. a wonderful time to be alive. And trust the creator. It's funny. Um Sarah, who you both met, was is an also an NAT holder. I met her for the first, I think she, she was from Sweden and she came in and yes. I asked her, yeah, I said, why did you buy, Sarah Storer, I think. I said, Sarah, why did you buy an NET? And, and did you know a lot about it? Like whatever. And she said, I trust you. It's like, I've been following you for a long time and I trust you. And I, and I we even got into the conversation. I'm like, well, what if this turned out to be a horrible event or whatever? And she said, well, I trust that you would, have another use for it that would be valuable because I trust you, the creator. So I think that's where if you are following somebody for a long time, like there's a couple authors that I follow. Um, like Blake Crouch is a really amazing author. Like if, if Blake launched an NFT, NFT program of some kind, I probably would be interested in that. And it wouldn't necessarily matter what specifically was behind it. I would be interested because it's Blake's new project and I want to support Blake. So I think it's that kind of thinking instead of, oh, what happens if that goes out of business? Well, the creator will probably make good on their promises to do something else with it. Yes, we really enjoyed meeting Sarah and that was pretty uh, impressive, yes. especially because it was still COVID-ish and especially yep. uh, for her to come over from Sweden. Yep. Um, one of our community members, Sherry Richardson, asked, what type of price point do you start with? What, is there any price points that you would recommend for an NFT or social token? So with this, with the social token, we were on the rally network. So the price of our token was dictated by rally. So we're a sub token, much, much different. And this happens if you're on minted or you're on rally or some of these networks of social tokens. So I think we launched, I think we were about 26 cents when we launched and Tilcoin right now is about $8 and 50 cents or something like that. Um, so it is dictated by rally, but it's all basically supply and demand. So if people sell your token, uh, it's going to be less. If they buy more of it and it's more in demand, it'll be more. NFTs are different. You can set your price. So if it is an exclusive NFT, you can, you could, I mean, I've seen some NFTs launch at thousands of dollars an NFT that have done fairly well because it's a limited supply. It's a lot of value. Most NFTs will launch at a very small price point because they want to get them into the hands of other people and then have those people trade them and trade the value of it. So you do have some speculation in it. I'm not necessarily sure anybody here would think about those kinds of things, but if you wanna know like why a creator would do that. So if you're an artist and you have 5,000 pieces of digital art, all separate that you send out, you might say, I'm, gonna, I'm going to price these at 0.1 ETH and we'll get them in the hands or maybe 0.01 ETH or 0.05 ETH, something just to get them into the hands plus uh, any fees and get them in the hands of a bunch of people. And then if you, let's say, sell them on the secondary market of uh, OpenSea, every time those are sold, you can set it into the smart contract about what the creator gets paid. So for NET, let's say, Gina, you go and sold your NET on OpenSea, which you can do because that's our secondary market, we would get 5% of whatever that price is because we put that into the contract. Some set it up to 7%. I like between 2.5 and 5%, I think is reasonable so if you want to pe have people have it especially for a genesis project i would price it as low as possible that you feel comfortable with to get it into the hands of your super fans uh and by the way like with even though tilt coin is eight dollars and fifty cents we give out 
way more tilt coin than is bought every week. We probably give out a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars worth of tilt coin every week because we have all kinds of contests and because we're trying to incentivize them to do behaviors we want, like share the newsletter, like get on the Discord, do the review, like Terry, you said, the, do the reviews of the podcast, those types of things, so we can give it out as often as we can. Yeah, and that's something we encourage each of you to do. Go over in, to where you get your podcast, look up Content Inc., I-N-C, as well as This Old Marketing, the two separate podcasts, and listen through that. You'll be able to do a, do a review there, and then you'll be able to receive $20 each, $40 total in tilt coins. So you got that. You'll be in the community. And uh, Joe, people are going to want to get to know you even maybe beyond the podcast or stuff. How can they get in touch with you? What Or do you have any uh, major events coming up or something you want to uh, tell us about oh geez yeah so i mean you i think you already posted it. i'm at joe polizzi p-u-l-i-z-z-i dot com all my stuff's there but my big project right now is the tilt so the tilt.com and then our big event we haven't announced where or exactly when but it's going to be the first week in may uh, creator economy expo 2023 is going to happen we will be announcing all the details of that i believe the first week end of the first week of september with all the wonderful details. So we will absolutely, and, and the whole thing around CEX is for serious content creators. If you're a serious content creator and you're trying to be a content entrepreneur, we're going to have some of the most successful uh, case studies around that is going to be talking about that. And of course, the two of you will be there because you get free access. Because you're exactly. already paid for it. You already paid exactly. for it. And actually, be- I, I'm already talking with, you know, like, well, I'll talk with both of you is we're trying to create something special there where I'm, where I'm thinking unlimited drinks if the budget team will let me do it. You know, something like that where, and then a special event, obviously, for all of our NET holders. But anyway, so I'm at Joe Polizzi on Twitter as well. And uh, yeah, I would just say if people want to check out what we're doing with the social token, go to the tilt.com, sign up, go to rally get your ID and then we'll send you the till coin and you can start to see how we work the process and uh, see if it works for you. But that's what I would recommend if anybody's interested in that is just try it out. I think that'd be great. And by the way, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, and a great place to hold the next event would be Orlando, Florida. Uh, we, <laughs> Gina and I would really think that would be a fabulous place and many others too. So uh, just for your be, consideration. Yeah, I'll be at Disney World the whole time. So I don't know if I could do that, but uh, I got to see the Star Wars exhibit at, at, uh, at Disney World. So. Oh, yeah, we can see Disney World off of our balcony or in the lobby oh out here. So we, that, we look at Harry Potter's world over here, but uh, people who <laughs> follow us know that. We can see it right here. Well, Joe, um, you gave us some amazing information, great content, as always, and we really appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to hearing more of your podcast. Gina, before we let him go, any final words that you have? Yes, well, thank you so much, Joe. Fantastic information. Gosh, I could probably ask you questions for three hours nonstop, but you've given us some great, great golden nuggets. We really appreciate it. And for those of you who want to get the replay, the only way to get the replay is you need to have registered at buildbusinesschallenge.com. You could be listening live right now without having registered, but if you want the replay and a lot of the links that are shared today that that Joe called out and uh, a nice little summary that our amazing Dorothy Viejas team member puts together for us there. Uh, be Get on buildbusinesschallenge.com so that you can do that. And I will just say, you heard it here, guys. There are just 45 of those NETs left out, out in the wild, so to speak, uh, that have not been minted when you purchase them. It's called minting when you per- are one of the first purchase or the first purchaser. And um, because ETH is down, because we are in this crypto winter, they're a really good deal right now. My goodness. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know the exact r- uh, price. Do you know what the price is in today's dollars, Joe, roughly? Yeah. So it'd be like uh, for the lifetime ticket, it'll be like $1,600, $1,700, mm. something like that. So when we started, that was it. When we started, ETH was at 4300 or something like that. Yeah. So it was 4300 for one. And and now it's uh, it's 17 It went down to, yeah, it went down to 850 just a while ago. And it's like, okay, that's, you know, we, we priced in ETH, so we're going to stick to it. 
Exactly. The NETs are on sale right now. So now's the time to get that. And of course, they could go down, they could go up, you know, we don't know. <laughs> and, no, no, no financial uh, advice, right? This is not exactly. financial advice. <laughs> no financial advice, but it is content. And so if that's something that you're interested in, you want to build it, this is a community you want to at least examine and look at it. Joe, always good to see you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll see you then at the next uh, CEX that will be coming along. And uh, maybe Orlando, whoever it is, we're going to try to be there and <laughs> make sure that we can see you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you both for all the support. I really appreciate it. Hey, don't stop now. We've got a lot more videos out there for you about freedom, liberty, living the life of an entrepreneur who believes in live and let live. Matter of fact, here's a way you can make a positive difference in the world. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. That lets the algorithms know, those wacky algorithms know, that hey, people like this kind of thing of live and let live and doing it in a peaceful way. Thanks for being here with us and we're looking forward to hearing from you.